let's go so yeah this video i i could not believe it guys i'm gonna need your help getting through what we're gonna get to today because i wanted to talk about mel tucker him potentially being the next great coach at lsu i wanted to talk about lane kiffin and whoever is going to fix this mess i also today wanted to focus on miles brennan as he is sadly entering the transfer portal but finally something that we all together on this channel has been begging begging the media to bring up to ed orgeron well it, it finally sort of kind of got brought up today in the press conference you used last week to do a lot of scouting uh what did you come up with and you know, how, how confident are you that your coaches kind of you know learned a lot about your team yeah well <laughs> they're very good as always well, very well coached uh, well, uh, on us. Okay, on us. Well, on self-scouting, we, we're too predictable. All right, so stop it right there. <laughs> uh, we will finish the rest of this wild clip, uh, but we first need to give some love to Michael Cobble of WBRZ for correcting Ed Orgeron, uh, because Coach O, I believe, if I'm interpreting this correctly, thought Cobble was talking about Alabama at first but no Michael Cobble was asking Ed Orgeron about scouting your own team and the first thing he says really this is unprovoked this is a really open-ended question is once again the quiet part out loud that they're too predictable but Ed Orgeron didn't hold back uh, about formations too predictable first down uh, we're very, very predictable on uh, on defense. Uh, we need to have more of a variety on first down. We are giving them the same looks over and over again. Uh, there's not much disguise. What we line up in, we were in. So we got to, you know, you can't, this part of the season, you just can't put a lot of new stuff in. But we put in a couple little wrinkles to make it tough. And then the, the biggest part for us on defense is adjusting. Uh, we have not been in the right adjustments. We have not been in the right position according to some formations. So we had an adjustment period all last week, adjustment period all this week. We've been doing it, but we're really, really holding in and being in the right place at the right time. Wow. Huh? 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 Uh, you guys saw, obviously, with uh, the press conference clip that I just shared with you, once again, that was the full question and answer no edits done by me. Obviously, I showed you some images, not only of this year, but last year, okay? This very predictable thing, uh, notice that word, predictable, um, th this was a major issue last year, okay? And if you just happen to be new to the channel, um, and, and we have gotten a lot of subscribers over the past uh, few months, and also we got a few today because uh, I did have a viral tweet <laughs> happen today because I actually did tweet this exact clip full question and answer and uh it, it's made its way around the internet okay and what made it really spicy was that one of lsu's leading defenders neil farrell also liked uh this tweet and uh that just goes to show you how bad things really are right now but look, I understand a lot of you want to focus on the future, but if you don't learn from your past, we might make this same mistake moving forward, okay? So, the first thing is, I don't want this video to be a victory lap, okay? Once again, PHL, not only me, but a lot of you were saying this as well on live streams or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, we were right about this, okay? This offseason, viewers of this channel and me as well, we kept bringing this up. So, yes, look... I don't care about going viral on Twitter. In fact, I wish the opposite was true. I wish I was wrong about all these defensive problems. I wish LSU had fixed the issues uh, that just kept happening because every single one of you watching this probably are LSU fans, and you've seen this happen over and over and over again, which is why they never really press Ed Orgeron on his schematic decisions and the scheme that we do run. And simply put, it is the number one reason why our team has been so bad. I know we like to focus on, well, 
uh, Miles Brennan is hurt and Derek Stingley is hurt. But the bottom line is we could have had Ed Reed, John Lynch, Warren Sapp on defense, and it wouldn't have mattered. Our scheme was so, so, so bad that we would have given up the yards that we would have given up and we would have lost the games that we would have lost anyway. And, you know, there's just no other way around it. And I understand Ed Orgeron is making excuses. Well, it's too late to put in new stuff. And da, 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 da. No, it's not. And this was a glaring problem when KJ Costello and Mississippi State threw for 623 yards on you. In week one, you have to start questioning whether or not the 4-3 is the right thing to do. Or whichever scheme you're running, you have to switch things up. That's the problem. And the thing is, is there are so many resources out there to tell you when you play a team like an air raid offense, such as Mike Leach or a Chip Kelly UCLA offense that you know are going to run a lot of crossing routes, you can't stay in man coverage and a four man rush and not give them different looks because they're eventually going to pick you apart anyway. And that's why it is so important for the media to ask him about this because it is the number one problem with LSU football. It is the number one reason why we stunk so bad. You guys are looking at the yards per play numbers. They don't lie. We were so bad when it came to defending explosive plays. Now, ironically, we have been slightly better this year. Last year, we gave up seven yards per play in eight out of 10 games. And by the way, I I can't say it enough. It is so, so, so bad. And the fact that we didn't fix it is an even bigger issue. And I talked about this last week, not only on this channel, on 104.5 with Jay Hill and Mario and just everywhere. It blows my mind, blows my mind that there wasn't someone in the building or or Ed Orgeron himself. There was no one that could acknowledge how badly this was hurting the team. And right now, uh, you have been looking at the schedule. And I think part of the reason why a guy like Neil Farrell uh, and, and just everyone on the team, and I, I will share uh, this little personal anecdote. There are some people that may or may not know players on the team that do watch this channel and have sent me messages about you know, some of the stuff that we've talked about on this channel, I think part of the reason why everyone is so frustrated about this, and it is particularly frustrating that we're looking towards the future and what could happen at LSU football is that this year was such a wasted year. Now, don't get it twisted. We had a lot of issues, injuries, offensive line or whatever, but you're looking at the schedule right now, and I want you to tell me which team has been the best team on this schedule? And the answer, ironically, is a Bo Nix led Auburn team. That is the best team that has been on this schedule. UCLA has turned out to be major frauds. Um, obviously, Ole Miss really isn't anything all that spectacular. Of course, we also, huh? I still can't believe we lost the way that we lost to Kentucky, but that is what happened. And Kentucky obviously isn't really that good. And ironically, our best win on the year, Mississippi State, well, that was the game we actually did shift up our defensive scheme. And we did have a lower (laughs) broken tackle percentage on defense. Even though we played 88 plays on defense, our scheme was so much tighter and better uh, because obviously we switched things up. But then after that game, we went back to doing what we did. So look, it's the number one reason why we're, we are where we are. And what really frustrates me is that this schedule has been cotton soft up to this point. What we were doing schematically gave us very little opportunity to win, which is why I, I, I've brought this up a few times. At other schools, coordinators are made available to the media. Even schools like Clemson and Missouri, where their coordinators have been under a lot of heat, they at the very least have had to answer questions. I wish the same thing could happen here because uh, this has happened multiple times now where Ed Orgeron has kind of sort of called out Jake Peets and Durante Jones. It would be very nice to hear their side of what exactly has gone wrong. So once again, trust me, being in the local media is really hard. I used to do the the daily media grind, but 
um, I, I'm glad Michael Cobble followed up and 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 did this today because now we have a, a pretty uh, honestly it brings up more questions and answers, uh, but we do have more clarity about. Uh, some of the scheme and adjustment issues that LSU's had, not only this year, but last year. Boom! So you reach the end of the video. Get your gritty on, baby. TDP and Jare, let's go! So, look, I understand that I might be overselling uh, this LSU defensive issue, but I want to show you one specific thing I think would make the LSU defense a little bit more unpredictable. What we talk about and what Ed Orgeron was talking about somewhat ironically in the press conference is uh, the lack of unpredictability with the LSU defense. You're currently looking at an Arkansas play from last year where if you were Felipe Franks, this is a pretty easy play to read. Jacoby Stevens, who is the safety, play action fake. He knows Jacoby Stevens. They did this all last year over and over and over again. Every play action fake Jacoby Stevens would just run into the box, which would make an easy man coverage assignment um, to where you could just hit teams over the top in the space that Jacoby Stevens left. And Mike Woods going up against Jay Ward, who was a backup at the time, uh, is just such an easy read for Felipe Franks to make right there. And that is what Ed Orgeron was referencing. But that's the thing. That actually happened last year okay but those same issues apply to this year now once again that's why i'm very defensive of durante jones but this was a pretty clear opportunity for lsu to blitz okay and you guys showed i showed you the stat earlier that um lsu is one of the least uh likely teams to blitz in the country and our pass rush rate percentage went down but once again you could watch this video here last year lsu had an elite pass rush that was top three in the sec and they were still historically bad defensively and the reason why they were historically bad is because of what you just saw with the arkansas play they are so easy to read and if you never blitz and you never give teams different looks what actually happens on this play um, is what's going to happen to you every single time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run this play at full speed. It's a third and 10. We're getting uh, no pass rush here. Once again, uh, go check out our Jaqueline Roy film study from this game. Um, one of the more underrated plays in LSU history was Jaco uh, Jaqueline and Roy winning this game for us. I'll link that film study down below. But as you guys saw right there, that was a pretty easy pitch and catch and an easy read for Richardson to Copeland there to tie the game. But this all easily could have been prevented. Now, once again, I am not a defensive coordinator. I'm not uh, a film expert. I try my best on my film studies, but this was a pretty clear opportunity for LSU to call a blitz. Whenever teams line up in trips bunch like this, this is a great opportunity to blitz one of these guys coming off the edge because it's really hard for the protection or even the personal protector to see a blitzer coming from right here in the midst of all this traffic. And unless one of these wide receivers chips, Right here, this normally will lead to an easy strip sack. And Sage Ryan, as many of you know, even though he's hurt right now, is a very special athlete. And what could have happened here is we could have blah, 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 blah. We could have brought Sage Ryan off the corner here. We would have brought, uh, this would have been, um, B.J. Ojolari going through this B-gap, we would have sent Roy through this A-gap, and we would have had Sage Ryan coming unblocked at Richardson, and this could have been a strip sack. All we know is that he wouldn't have had all day to throw this ball, and if your pass rush doesn't get home and you're playing man coverage in the fourth quarter at a hot stadium, uh, you're eventually going to get burned if you have all that time to throw. And the thing is... Um, 
even the 2019 LSU offense struggled when blitzers came out of that trips bunch formation. We saw this not only against Alabama, but we saw this against Clemson, where they had some success having blitzers uh, come off the edge in those trips bunch formations. So that's essentially what Ed Orgeron's talking about, but we just never do it. And this is simple. I'm, I'm just a regular dude. Uh, but blitz packages, you got to be able to use it. Um, and <laughs> it's bad. It's really, really, really bad. It's one thing if you blitz some of the time, but you never blitz. And that's the funny thing about the history of LSU football is, well, most of our best pass rush has been from blitzing. <laughs> Whether uh, it's Chad Jones, Tyron Matthew, Grant Delpit, um, that's been a big framework of our success, whether it's Saban, whether it's Chavis, uh, Aranda, whoever you want to mention, they were all excellent at switching up looks and blitzing guys off the edge, and we simply don't do it at all. Um, maybe we see it against Alabama. We'll see. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Once again, it was a layered video. It's kind of weird. I do want to welcome in all our new viewers. And uh, if you like film studies, we do them every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central. If you like just basically anything LSU football, you gotta subscribe, baby. We have fun on this channel, okay? So once again, uh, Tuesday night live stream will start at 8.30 Central, and we are switching things up for the Bama game this weekend. We are going to do a pregame live stream, and uh, we hope you come by for that. I think we'll start that at around uh, 3 Central. So we hope uh, to see you there. It is power hour LSU. Boom. 3 Central. That might be a little too early. I, I don't know. We'll do it before the game. And uh, tonight we're doing salmon. Let's 